Hi and welcome back to Advanced Photoshop. This week we're going to take a look at a technique where we take a photograph and make it look as though it was a watercolor painting. Graphic designers and illustrators oftentimes need images that look like traditional artwork, paintings, drawings, and so forth. And the designer may not have the time to produce such an image or they don't want to have to hire somebody to do that, which can be rather pricey and time consuming. So we're going to show you how to take a photograph and make it look like a watercolor painting. To create this painting, we're going to use the pattern stamp tool. And your pattern stamp tool is hidden behind your clone stamp tool. So I'm choosing my pattern stamp tool. And then up in my options bar at the top, we see that you've got uh, a, few, a few basic patterns that come with Photoshop. None of them are very exciting. Uh, for example, the first one is this bubbles pattern. And when I choose that bubbles pattern, and I go to my, my pattern stamp tool, and I paint, you see that it actually paints that pattern on my image. Now, why you would want to paint a bubble pattern on your image is a mystery to me. But what we're going to do is take a photograph and convert it into a pattern, and then use that as the basis for our watercolor painting. Now here's a finished example of what our watercolor will probably end up looking like. Uh, you see that there is a watercolor paper texture on it. it looks like it's painted on, on actual watercolor paper. And you see that the the brush strokes have a very watery appeal to them. Little rings of pigment that go towards the edges of the brush strokes. Not a lot of detail. And you also see that not every area of the, uh, the paper is covered with our, our image. There are blank parts of the paper showing through. And so it looks very much like a real watercolor. Those of you who have had watercolor experience know how difficult watercolor can be. And you'll also have an advantage over those people who do not have watercolor experience because you've seen the effect that you can achieve with watercolor. And so you know what to look for. But take a look at this finished example and you can get a pretty good idea of what a watercolor painting should look like or just uh, go online, do a Google search for watercolors, uh, preferably somebody significant such as John Singer Sargent or Winslow Homer. And those are two masters of uh, watercolor. And you can take a look and see what their paintings look like so that you have an idea of what it would look like. Again, we want this to look like a painting, not like a photograph. Let's start by opening up the Painting Start JPEG file, which you can download from Blackboard. Before we start making our painting, we need to clean up this image. And it's got a few problems we need to take care of first. There are some uh, exposure problems that was taken apparently late in the day, so it's very dusky looking. Foreground is a little bit uh, too dark. And we've got some objects here at the top that need to remove. Um, and we've got a little cloud over on the right-hand side that we need to remove. And then there's some uh, dead seaweed on the beach, which is kind of unattractive. And we're going to get rid of all that stuff uh, before we actually define our pattern. I'll start by zooming into 100% magnification. Quick way to do that. Double-click on my zoom tool there. Takes us into 100% magnification. And then we'll scroll down to the top. And we're going to get rid of this tree branch at the top of our picture. To remove this branch, I'm going to use the Clone Stamp tool to do that. But if I use the Clone Stamp tool right now, it's going to be very difficult to make certain that whatever I uh, clone doesn't get over into the white matte area. So I'll do this. Um, I'm just going to use my Quick Selection tool and select this white portion up here at the top. And then I'm going to invert my selection. Control Shift I, Command Shift I on the Macintosh. That selects everything except the white part. 
and now I'll go to my clone stamp tool and I'm going to move the cursor beneath the selection edge. Hold down the Option or Alt key and click. That's where we're going to be sampling from. And I'm setting my opacity to 50%. And we're just going to paint over that brush. Now because I have everything except that white portion at the top selected, that's going to keep me from accidentally cloning into that area. And because I've got my opacity set at 50% and I'm using a nice soft edge brush, it'll blend in very nicely and nobody will ever see a scar there. Okay, I'm going to deselect. Let's move over to the right side of the image where we have this little cloud we need to get rid of. We'll do the same thing. Quick select tool to select the white part. Invert the selection. Then use our clone stamp tool. Sample right next to that cloud and then just paint over it and it's gone. Again on the, the beach area there's trash that we need to remove so I'll do the same thing. Quick selection tool. Select the white areas so that we don't paint into those. Invert the selection clone stamp these objects out. There's another part of the image which is going to be difficult to work with and that's where you have the number and the name of the boat on the hull so we're going to just remove that Okay, that's done. I'll go to my Layers panel and I'll convert my background layer to a smart object. I'll go to Image, Adjustments, Shadows and Highlights. And we're going to move our shadow slider to the right a bit to open those shadows up. You see what a difference that makes. I'm recommending you set it at about 40% or so and I'll adjust the color correction to heighten the colors because they're a little bit muted. So my color correction, let's pump that up. I'll set that at about a plus 40% as well. Before and after. And because it's a smart object, we can turn that on or off and come back at any time and change those settings if they don't work out for us. Next let's take a look at the white mat around our image. The mat is necessary to give your image uh, to separate from the background and it's a common practice to do this on any pieces of art that are on paper. This mat is a little too thin though. We need to give it a little more breathing room so we're going to extend the canvas size. I'm going to choose Image and Canvas Size. I want to add 150 pixels to this image. So I'll start by setting the units to pixels. I'm going to click on the Relative checkbox and we're going to set this to 150 on the width and 150 on the height and we'll keep the anchor set at the middle so that it adds the whiteness to all four sides equally. And we click OK. You see that the extra pixels have been added to all four sides but it only added transparency so I need to go in and add some white around that. Let's go to our layers panel and I'm going to hold down my controller command key and click on the new layer button that places the layer beneath the previously selected layer and I'm going to fill that with white. 
Now as I'm looking at this image, I see the colors are a little bit muted for what I want to do. I'm going to intensify the colors and increase the saturation a bit. So let's make layer 0 active once again. Let's create an adjustment layer for hue and saturation. I'll take the saturation slider and I'm going to increase that until those colors come up a bit. I think around maybe 40 to 45 percent would look pretty good. We don't want to make the colors bloom like this. We just want to increase them a little bit. So about 40 or 45 percent would do pretty nicely. Personally I think the yellow is a little bit too intense. So from my drop down menu where it says master, I'm going to click on that and choose yellows and I'm going to pull that saturation down a bit just so that it's not quite so intense. I'm just going to drop it about 10 or 15 percent. Now we're ready to convert our image into a pattern. First I want to make certain that my layer 0 is active again and then I'll choose edit and define pattern which is down near just underneath where it says define brush preset it'll say define pattern and a little dialog comes up shows a thumbnail of the image and a name and we just call it painting or whatever you want to call it click OK now to prepare my image for painting I'm going to need to create three new layers one is going to be a translucent layer which is going to allow me to see my image kind of uh, in a semi-transparent pattern and another is going to be completely opaque which I can turn on and turn off periodically to see what my painting looks like and then third is just a uh, a blank layer which is where I'll do my painting so let me show you how this is going to unfold I'll create a new layer go to the top of your layer stack and let's create a new layer I'll call this one translucent I'm going to fill that with white paint and then I'm going to drop the layer opacity to 70 percent just so that I can see the image beneath it. Next I'm going to make another layer. I'll call this one opaque. This one I'm going to fiddle with an off-white color. This is going to represent the actual watercolor paper. I want it to be just kind of a, a just a light cream color so in my color picker for my foreground color I'm changing over to the uh, to the where the color is set to the orange range in my hue slider and then I'll pick a color that is just a little bit off-white just kind of creamy we don't want pure white just a little bit off-white just like this and then I will fill my opaque layer with that color. Make certain you choose foreground color. For right now I'll turn that one off. Next I'll create my third layer. I'll call this one painting. And now we're ready to begin. So let's go to our pattern stamp tool. Again that's hidden underneath your clone stamp tool. So you can press S to get the clone stamp tool and then shift S to get to the pattern stamp tool. And in our options bar we're going to choose our newly created pattern which I've called painting. Here's a little bit larger image of it. There it is right there. Now before we get started we need to follow a few basic rules to make this a successful project. Remember we're trying to make this look like a watercolor painting and you're going to be painting as though you're actually painting with real paint. Uh, so 
don't paint across two contrasting colors with a single stroke. If you were, for example, if I were painting this yellow part of the boat right down here, I wouldn't take a paintbrush and paint from paint across it like this because you would paint the yellow, then you would clean your brush out and pick up a different color of paint to paint the hull, clean your brush, paint, use a different color to paint the beach, and so on and so forth. You couldn't paint these three colors in one single brush stroke. So we don't do that here either. Another rule is don't let two different colors touch. Again, if I'm painting the yellow, I don't want the yellow to be touching the dark color of the hull. If you paint quickly, the paper texture will show through, and while painting slow will flood the paper with color. And you may try leaving a few white spaces between some of your paint strokes to add a bit of realism. Now let's choose our paintbrush. Make certain that you are on the pattern stamp tool and let's load the wet media brush set. From my brush picker I'm going to click on the settings button and I'll scroll down to the very bottom where it says wet media brushes. I'll choose large list from the settings button. And I'm going to choose the watercolor textured surface brush. Right here. Now you're free to experiment with these different brushes and I recommend that you do that. But this is a good one for general purpose painting. I'm going to choose a slightly larger brush. I'm going to make certain that that is soft edge brush and make certain that your painting layer is active. And I'll use the pattern stamp tool to do my painting. Let me zoom in and I'll show you what, how this is going to work. I'll just start up here at the top and I'll click and drag to paint the image. Now again I'm painting with the pattern. And I paint very quickly and it makes it look like there's a blotch of wet watercolor there. If I click and hold down, you see how the paint kind of spreads out. So you can create really nice watery effects. Now the sky is the easy part. When we get down to the bottom, things get a little bit trickier. Don't forget to experiment with changing your brush size and your brush opacity. And to see what that does for you. Now you remember when I said not to paint across any two contrasting colors with one brush stroke? That's what's going to happen down here when we get to the mountains. I'll zoom in a little bit. Drop my brush size down. And I'm just going to paint the sky only. Now I'm painting a little bit too dark there. Maybe I should probably drop, drop my opacity of my paintbrush down a little bit. And I'm going to paint but not touch the mountains. Just keeping my brush stroke in the sky region. Now periodically what I'll do is go to my layers panel and I will turn on the opaque layer just to see what I've painted. This is actually my finished painting at this point. I'll turn off the opaque layer, 
so that we can see our original background image through the translucent layer. Now if I had painted straight across like this with a single brush stroke, you see it does, no longer looks like a painting because we've uh, we've destroyed the illusion because you can't take a single paintbrush with real paint, paint across two different colors of shapes and get two different colors. So when I paint the mountains, I just drop my brush size down and we paint only the mountains. And it's perfectly okay to leave a little bit of white space between the mountains and your sky. Again, I peri periodically turn on my opaque layer to see my painting. Now I'm going to speed things up here just a little bit to keep our video a little bit shorter. But don't rush through this. I'm just doing this to kind of cut to the chase here. I'm going to turn my opaque layer back off. And uh, I'm going to talk about painting the surf and the sand. Our sky is just this and the mountains too are just these big broad areas that are easy to paint. Down here in the um, in the surf area in the sand you got lots and lots of detail and if I paint that with my paintbrush it's just going to end up looking like a digital photograph which I don't want to do. So what I will do there is on my settings for my pattern stamp tool I'll go to the options at the top and I'll choose Impressionistic. And that way when I paint over there, it kind of blends those colors together. You see how it's blending those colors? We don't have a whole lot of detail there. It's just kind of smushing all those pixels together. And you decide what part of the image you want to paint, and what part of it that you want to leave blank. It's perfectly okay to have parts of your picture that are pure white. Now when it comes time to painting the boat and the detailed portions of the boat, it might be beneficial for me to just select those certain shapes. For example, if I want to paint this yellow part of the boat, I can select it with a quick selection tool and then paint only in those areas. Let's go to our quick selection tool. Zoom in here a little bit. I'll turn off my translucent layer for the time being and go to my quick selection tool and select that part right there. It selects it pretty quickly. Then I can turn back on my translucent layer and go back to my pattern stamp tool and paint. And it only paints within that selected area. Therefore it won't get outside of it ruining my picture. Then to get to those areas outside of it I can just invert my selection. Control Command Shift I. Now I'm free to paint on the outside of it, and these two colors won't blend together. For 
we're picking some of these other shapes such as the seats on the on the boat or other areas you may have to use the polygonal lasso tool to select them here I've used the polygonal lasso tool to select this lower portion of the boat this area right down in here and then I used my pattern stamp tool to paint over that and you can see how much like real watercolor it looks as I paint over these areas Okay, some time has gone past and I've done some more work on it. Probably not as much as I really need to. Uh, but you can see how it's shaping up. I put layers and layers of paint uh, on top of each other and I've added a little bit of detail uh, to it. But still I left some areas rather vague, intentionally so. Um, I'm going to turn on my opaque layer just that we see the finished product. Now I can do this too if I like. I can mask off uh, parts of the image. Maybe I don't want this hard corner showing up over there. If I wanted to I could create a layer mask and then using black paint I could paint off the parts that I don't want to see. Just mask them off a little bit. And that's you know that's kind of subjective. And again, I'd like for you all to put a lot more work into this. I'm just, like I said, just doing this to kind of speed things up, some kind of going a little bit faster than I would like to do so. But assuming that I'm finished with this, I now need to go back into it and finish it up and add some nice details to it. If it's too faint, you can do this. You can copy your painting layer which makes it denser. You could change the blending mode to multiply which makes it extremely dense. You can pull your layer opacity down if it becomes too dense at that point. And this is kind of totally up to you all. You've got adjustment layers you can add such as uh, hue and saturation and vibrance. Change your contrast with your curves or levels make your painting look finished. Next we want to add a watercolor paper texture to it. Cold press watercolor paper has a very rough texture and to simulate that texture we're going to download the watercolor paper JPEG file from Blackboard, open up in Photoshop and convert it to a PSD file and then use it as a texture. So let's do that. Here is the sample of watercolor paper. I'm just going to choose File, Save As, and we're just going to save it as a PSD file. And then close it. That's all we have to do to it. Then let's go back to our Layers panel. Make certain that your opaque layer is turned on go to the top of your layer stack and merge these layers together. Control alternate shift E, command option shift D on the Macintosh, merge those layers together. Then I'll choose filter, texture and texturizer down at the bottom of the list there and this huge panel shows up You'll see that from the texturizer menu you've got canvas as a default texture, brick, burlap, and sandstone, and so on. But I want to click this tiny little button just to the right of that. And I'm going to choose load texture. I'll then navigate to my watercolor paper PSD file. It has to be a PSD file. And choose open. I'm going to set the scale 
to 50 percent and I'm going to increase the relief up a bit. You don't want to make it too wild and crazy like this but we want to see that texture showing through. I'm thinking a relief of about 17 will do the trick. You can change the direction of the light to the left or to the right or to the top left or top right however it looks best to you. I kinda like it from the top right and click OK. I think my colors are a little on the dull side so I'll create an adjustment layer for hue and saturation. Of course this is relative to the image and to how I've painted it. Pump those colors up a little bit. Maybe about like that. And so there's my finished watercolor. So spend some time with this. Again, I kind of rush through this just to keep our video from beginning to be too lengthy. But spend a few hours on this. Get it right. Make it look like a professional watercolor. Even if you've never done watercolor before, you can look up examples, as I mentioned before. Make it look good. If it doesn't look good to you, it's not going to look good to anybody else. Okay, so again, this is a really, really nice technique. Uh, and do a good job on this, and it can be a nice piece for a portfolio. Okay, thank you, and uh, looking forward to working with you again soon. This is Mike McCreese.